So I'm seeing um, if people are asking if they're all muted. Yes. So uh, if you're on the participant sites, everyone is muted. Um, you can go ahead and type in any questions. Please use our Q&A feature and we'll, we'll get started in a moment. Uh, mean, meanwhile, Claudia and Susan, I'm really sorry, but I'm not able to find that that world icon anymore in our Zoom feature. Um, so what I guess what I'm wondering is, um, in the beginning, maybe we can ask the audience if anyone needs either Spanish or Mandarin interpretations. Um, and then we'll see um, about translating the, the slides and make them available after the presentation tonight. Okay. okay. All right. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, thank you so much for joining us families. And um, I'm Nancy Quay. I am the Hopkins Junior High Principal. We're soon to be middle school next year. We're very excited next year to be welcoming both the seventh and the sixth graders coming to Hopkins. And tonight is going to be information for our soon to be seventh graders and their families. And I'll also pass the mic to our awesome assistant principal, Mrs. Moore, to also introduce herself. Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here. Um, again, I'm Mrs. Moore, the assistant principal, and excited to have you here tonight. And we also have our interpreters, um, Ms. Claudia and also Ms. Susan. I'll let them introduce themselves as well and translate what has um, been said so far at the same time to also ask if anyone in the audience needs Spanish or Mandarin interpretations for tonight. Okay, me first, right? Sure. Okay. I, 各位家长您好,我是Susan,我是今天的中文翻译,我们今天提供了中文和西班牙语两种语种的翻译,您如果需要翻译,请举手,让我们知道。Hola, uh, muy buenas tardes, mi nombre es Claudia, voy a ser la intérprete de esta junta en español, estamos aquí acerca de un Informa, información acerca de los integrantes nuevos de la escuela Hopkins. En este momento están teniendo algo de dificultad con la, el audio de interpretaciones. Así que si hay alguien que necesita la interpretación en español, por favor dejarnos saber para poder hacer la traducción de la presentación y poder uh, tenerla disponible para ustedes. Gracias. Okay, I'm seeing one hand right now raised for interpretation, and I'm really uh, in two hands right now. I'm, I'm really sorry, families. Unfortunately, we're not able to get the simultaneous interpretations uh, feature to work. So what we'll do instead is we will work on translating the slideshows to both Mandarin and um, Spanish and make them available on our website after tonight so that you're able to see the information in those languages. And I'll let Susan and Claudia translate that. Uh, 家长, 呃, 各位家长您好, 我们因为技术的原因, 我们今天, 呃, 晚上我们不能, 呃, 因为提供不了这个翻译频道, 所以我们不能提供实时的翻译, 那么我们, 呃, 会在今天晚上的, 结, 晚这个, 呃, 讲座结束以后, 我们在网站上面会提供, 呃, 呃, 中文版的这个, 呃, 我们讲, 演讲的整个的,呃,就是演讲的这个内容的翻译的版本,你可以上网去查看相应的版本,呃,谢谢。Parece que en este momento hay algunas personas que sí están pidiendo la traducción eh, en ambos español y mandarín, así que queremos pedir disculpas, estamos teniendo algo de dificultad con el, uh, con el audio para poder hacer las traducciones al, uh, al mismo tiempo. Así que entonces van a tratar eh, de obtener las interpretaciones o la traducción de la presentación, ponerla disponible en la página de la escuela para que puedan leer la información que se va a decir en esta junta en este momento. Uh, uh, Principal Nancy, uh, the website is a Hopkins website or school district website. 
the Hopkins website. We'll be hosting、okay. all the information on our Hopkins website. Okay. 您可以在呃， uh, 您可以在呃， uh, 明天上网在 Hopkins 的呃、uh, 网站上面可以查到相应的中文翻译的呃， uh, 就是今天演示的内容。谢谢。Y brevemente,、uh, nuevamente, la información va a estar localizada en la página de internet de la escuela Hopkins directamente. Ahí es donde podrán obtener las、eh, traducciones de la presentación. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. In the chat, I also put a link to our、um, slide. So if you、uh, would like to follow along on your end and open up the slideshow. You have the link in our chat right now. So I'll go ahead and project. All right. So once again, welcome to Hopkins, and we're really excited to be welcoming even more Hopkins Hawks starting this.、Um, really starting in the summer. Miss Craig, can、we'll、I interrupt you? Yeah. Let me.、Um, yeah. Repeat, the parents are saying they don't have access to the to the link. So as I、oh. so、can we make that accessible? Oh, of course. Let me stop sharing for a moment. Thank you so much for letting us know. And let me change the sharing settings. All right. So that's changed right now. You might have to refresh your. Screen to to be able to see that now, but you should be able to see it. All right, thank you so much for letting us know. Now, now let's get the slideshow started again. All right, the purpose of tonight, we're going to mainly be going over our middle school program, especially for seventh graders, and focusing on classes that are available next year for them. Will at the same time provide some guidance and some support in completing the registration process、uh, and the registration forms that will all be、um, that all need to be turned in back into the sixth grade teachers that your child has right now by this Friday, March third. And any additional ways that you can reach out and get some help from our staff, because it always takes a team to make things happen. And we make sure that just in case you haven't been able to stop by our Hopkins campus, we have our new building, our multi-purpose building that's in that picture in the upper right-hand corner. It's already been used by many different groups. We are fortunate to be able to host、uh, multiple concerts there. A drama program. We had a drama show just a few weeks ago, and also our.、Um, Our PE classes have been happening inside, so we're really excited that our construction is on time and moving along. So planning ahead, just make sure that, especially in the summer, that if you have any address changes, please make sure that you're updating our district office so that we have the right way to contact you. You、uh, please be on the lookout for our August newsletter. It will have all the forms. About the August important dates, including Web, which is where everyone belongs. It's a really fun day where the seventh graders, specifically from twelve thirty to two thirty, so about two hours, they come on campus and they meet with our student leaders. They work really hard with our staff to plan out fun activities so that the students can have a way to informally connect with each other before school starts and. Get to walk around campus and get to see、uh, where the classes might be located, and get to meet each other. And also, our May Day information will be in that packet. And May Day, the date and the time, are right there for you too, so you can save the date. And the main things that happen on May Day are very similar to elementary school, where students get to、uh, learn their classes. So they'll pick up their schedules for our seventh graders. Take their ID pictures,、uh, get school forms, be able to sign up for their ASB card that will allow them a lot of discounts to school events, and then also be able to purchase our Hopkins swag, so like hoodies, shirts, and the first day of school. Just make sure that you have that on your calendar too. Is August sixteenth. So some of the important team members where you can reach out for more information. 
are essential to our all of our students success or so school counselors for sure. And you can see here there are a lot of different reasons that you or a student would would find help with our school counselors. So not just academic, especially in middle school where students are really learning more now about themselves and, um, and sometimes be more being more aware of the social interactions and sometimes the, the crunchy things, right, that happen between friends. Our counselors are really good support to help. And our seventh grade counselor next year will be Ms. Kin. Her email is right there. We also have our eighth grade counselor, of course, Ms. Moore. Her information is right there as well. And then uh, we will have a sixth grade counselor next year at Hopkins to support the sixth graders coming in. So a lot of different reasons that uh, uh, students would really benefit from talking with a counselor, just someone who can guide them along, not just with academic support, but also social emotional um, when there's an issue. And we also have a lot of different office staff. Um, so I really encourage both families and students to see our main office as a support central. So the main place where they can get school information and ask questions and get support. So you'll see here, we have our secretary, Mrs. Espacio. She's mainly in control and helping out with any, any questions about school donations, ASB cards, um, she purchases items for our school and also she updates our school calendar so that all the information is updated. Uh, when you have any questions about registration forms that you need to turn in, transcripts or ID cards, report cards, that's our registrar, Mrs. Loeb, our attendance questions or COVID reports that will go to Ms. Young. And we also have a campus supervisor, Mr. Wong, who is essential in being on the lookout and be making sure that school, uh, students are safe and the staff is safe. And then we have another office assistant, Ms. Ruella, uh, who's helping out with website, lost and found, any health office issues. And we also have a part-time nurse, uh, Ms. Marsha, and she's there to help with uh, health records, um, any information about medications that need to be kept at school. She's a super important help to, to staff and students. Right, and another part of what makes the school run is our parents, all of you who are in attendance tonight. Uh, we want you to make sure that you know by being a Hopkins parent or guardian, automatically you are part of our Parent Faculty Association, PFA, and you are automatically a member. And I really like the quote on the right side because I deeply believe that it's, of course, not easy, right, to, to support a child to, to be successful, especially now when there's so many different things, uh, so, so much pressure and so many different things in the world that could just make it stressful for, for a kid and adult too. It takes a village to raise a child. And of course, then it takes a village to support any child's parent. And PFA is a really, really supportive village. So I encourage everyone to be active in our PFA. And what does it do? Mainly our, the, the organization helps to raise money to support our students and our teachers, but they also organize volunteers. Um, so if you ever stop by our campus in the morning or afternoon, and you see how smoothly our traffic goes, um, that's all a lot of our PFA volunteers that come to help make sure that our students are safe and the cars are moving along um, smoothly. And of course we run socials. That's a really fun day where students get to come after school hours and just have different events, um, different things that they can do, including dancing, um, different games that they play. That's also possible because of the support our, of our PFA volunteers as well as well as our eighth grade prom promotion um, ceremony that's put together by PFA. When, the, when do they meet? They meet every Wednesday, uh, not every Wednesday, but they meet every first Wednesday of the month. And they are still deciding what happens next year, whether it continues to be Zoom or if it's in person next year. So that will be determined. But inviting all of you right now, please be on the lookout for those 
EFA meeting information next year and be involved actively in that organization. Think of it as a really su supportive group of parents and guardians that can help all of our kids be successful. And how can you help? So especially on May Day, we'll have a table set up where um, parents can go and meet our PFA representatives and be able to donate on the spot. Uh, all the major donation drives will happen in the beginning of the year, but of course, throughout the year as well. So you'll have different ways to donate your money, and also there, you can donate your time. Um, PFA also always puts out information about how to volunteer, um, and that form will be in the May Day packet. Are open. There are different open positions, traffic control being one, campus supervising, especially during lunch. And next year with the sixth graders, we'll need even more help. So that would also be a possibility to volunteer to supervise during lunchtime. And you can also be a member on the PFA board. Um, those are leader, leadership positions where you can vote to make decisions together on how to, to spend the money that's donated by families, where to support um, Hopkins in running more smoothly. And if you're interested, you can contact our president right now, Ms. Pritika Gupta, and um, her email is right there. And she also um, just told me that the open board positions will be available in March. So we'll push out that information to elementary school principals in March. That way they can help us share that information with you all um, if you're interested in running for the open positions on the board. The website is right there um, if you would like to check them out. It's also linked on our website as well. All right, so I know that registration can be a cumbersome process, um, so we'll, we're here to help with that as well. And Mrs. Moore, I'll, I'll pass the mic to you now to go through that. All right, so uh, thank you. Uh, yes, I'm gonna walk you through the registration process, um, filling out the form, uh, deciding on whether or not you and your child will be signing up for district, um, the honors science or English classes. We'll talk about accelerated math um, as an option and then ranking elective choices. Next slide. Okay, so every seventh grade student will be taking six classes. They'll be taking English, math, science, world history, PE, and their elective. Um, I know we have some immersion parents that are here. Uh, your student's program will be a little different. We're having an immersion night tomorrow, um, but still stay for to this because this is also relevant for you. But we'll go into more of the immersion tomorrow night. Okay, next slide. This is just a sample bell schedule. Um, we have different bell schedules depending on the day of the week, uh, but we always start at 815. Most days we get out at 227. We do have an early release day on Wednesdays when we get out at 124, uh, but we always start at 815 for first period. Um, it'd be great for your students to be on campus between 8, 8, 10 to avoid the tardies. And there is free breakfast that is served every day beginning at 7.15 in the morning. So this is what the registration form looks like. Um, I'm going to walk you through things. Uh, and again, uh, on this form, you'll be get indicating which English and science class uh, your child is signing up for, which math class. Um, choosing electives. Uh, there's a portion that will be filled out by the teacher, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, these forms are due March 3rd, uh, which is this Friday. I do realize a lot of people put in the comment uh, that's, that GOMES, they're at science camp. So yes, your deadline has been extended to Monday, March 6th, but everybody else should be getting these in by March 3rd to the um, current sixth grade teachers. And just make sure, um, I don't have like a, I can't point to it, but on the bottom left side is where the parent needs to sign it and date it. Um, so make sure you um, sign and date the form before submitting it. Okay. 
So let's talk about honors first. Um, we have two classes that are available for honors or college prep. Um, we have both English honors and science honors. There are two ways that your child can qualify for the honors classes. Um, the first way is if they're gate identified um, in math or English or both. Um, so that's one way to be to, to meet the criteria. The other way is by looking at the your child's grades in sixth grade. So to be eligible for seventh grade English honors, your student needs to have earned all A's or B's in reading and writing all three trimesters in sixth grade. So again, for English honors to qualify, your child must have all A's or B's in reading and writing all three trimesters. If your school uses a number system instead, it would be fours and threes, okay? To qualify for science honors, we look at three grades in, in, um, in sixth grade. We look at reading, writing, and math grades. Again, all three of those have to be all A's or B's, all three trimesters. So your child's either gate identified or they have met the grade requirement. Um, and again, if your child qualifies, that doesn't mean they have to take honors. So we're not pushing for students to take all honors classes. Um, that's a choice that you as a family makes, uh, but they need to maintain a, a certain grade to, to remain in it. So um, to stay in honors, they should be maintaining a C minus or higher for English and science in order to go on for the next year. I'll move on to the next slide, which we'll talk oh. about accelerated math. Is there this is more? Yeah, I just want to pause because we're getting a lot of the same questions. I just want to pause here to answer. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are saying Chapborn is right now on science camp. No worries. I know that our deadline was March 3rd, but you, of course, if you're on science camp, please turn in the forms to the teacher on March 6th um, at, on the Monday. And they're coming back. Um, this Friday, I believe. So yes, you can turn into the teachers um, on Monday, the, the next school day. And there's also some questions about what immersion programs are. So immersion programs are, uh, our district has two immersion programs, one in Spanish and one in Mandarin. Basically each program allows our students to learn English and the other language at the same time in academic content. So if your child is in that program right now, um, we have a specific information night tomorrow for those families so that they can learn about specifically what that program looks like in middle school level. If you are not in that program, but your child is pretty proficient in Mandarin and Spanish and you're interested, um, you can go to the district website or you can reach out to us after tonight and we can connect you to the district office um, department where you can apply to join the program during middle school. All right. Okay, so for accelerated math, um, accelerated math, the criteria is different. Um, the district is not looking at gate identification. They're not looking at grades. Uh, what the district is looking at is your students' iReady scores. So in sixth grade, your student has had two iReady assessments already, one in the fall, one in the winter. I've posted, um, I've put the scores that are needed in order for your child to qualify. So in the fall, your child had to have scored at a 495 or higher. And in the winter, or in the winter, score at a 514 or higher. So if they've met the criteria for one of those and then they are eligible to sign up. Um, there's a thing at the bottom there that talks about practice assessments. I'll talk more about that on the next slide. Um, but again, I want you to understand that accelerated math, it's not an honors, it's not, it's, it's the same amount of math, it's, excuse me, it's the same math that everybody else is doing, but at a faster pace. So basically what students are doing in junior high is completing three years of math in two years. So they're doing all of seventh grade, all of eighth grade, and all of ninth grade by the time they leave Hopkins um, or the other junior highs in, in uh, Fremont. So I'll go to the next slide and, and go into a little more depth about math. 
Yeah, and then let's pause here for a second. Um, some multiple families are asking the difference between accelerated and honors. And that's what yes, this yeah. is more saying, because in accelerated math, they're accelerating the, the speed of what they're learning. They're basically trying to squeeze in two years of math into one year. That's why it's called accelerated. It's going by much faster. And honors, it's not going by faster, but it's it's the students are in the same class as students in our CP English. We really believe in heterogeneous grouping with of students. Um, so in those English classes that the students have the honors designation, they are going to be asked to do more challenging work um, in the same class as the students who are in CP grade level English. Yeah, and just to clarify, the math is not honors. So there's honors science, honors English. And so the criteria for honors is being gate identified or having certain grades, A's or B's. And the accelerated is looking at your child's iReady scores. So looking more at the math pathways for seventh grade, there are three different levels of math. Uh, we have what's called Math Essentials. That is a remedial course. That is not on your green registration form. People are not allowed to just sign up for that. Uh, the district will place your child in that class um, if they are scoring at two grade levels or lower on the iReady. So any student who is two grade levels or lower will be placed in Math Essentials. It's again, a remedial course to slow down so that students can hopefully get the foundation that they're missing. The regular math is CC2. Um, all of your students currently are in CC1. So CC1 is sixth grade, CC2 is seventh grade. Um, so that is just the grade level math. And then the accelerated math is the CC2 slash CC3. So that is doing all of seventh grade and half of eighth grade in seventh grade. So they're doing one and a half years of math in one year. Um, and so on our website, as well as the district's website, um, there's a link that says seventh grade math placement process. That's a link that will take you to a letter that was sent out to you by the district. Um, again, you can access it on our website or on the uh, district's website. In that letter, there are links for you um, that have a practice test, which I, I highly recommend. Um, there's a practice test that you can give your child. Um, it gives you the, you know, the logistics and, and, and the setting. There we go. There's a copy of it. It's the, the practice tests are at the bottom of that letter. There's an answer key and it tells you, um, you know, what kind of score to look for. Um, to determine if accelerated will, will be the right fit. Um, and what I always tell people um, is you may be really good at math, but accelerated math may not be really good for you. It is fast paced. There's not a lot of time to slow down um, and to keep going over uh, the content. Um, I can speak for my own son. He's a very strong math student, um, but he opted out of the accelerated um, pathway because of the pace of the class. So that's just something as a family to, to determine what is best for your, your child. Okay. The next slide will be about English. So again, for English, we have both college prep and honors. Like Ms. Quay stated, we do um, double code or we, we combine students in these classes in our English class. So whether your student is college prep or honors, they will be mixed with each other. Um, they do the same, um, the same content, the same uh, essential questions and themes, the same literature. The district differentiates honors English by requiring the Shakespeare, but our teachers just teach it to everybody. So whether your child is college prep or honors, um, they'll be getting the same curriculum. What will be different is the, um, the you know, the, the teachers will differentiate the, the curriculum according to college prep and honors. For our students who are um, developing their English language uh, skills, instead of taking English class, though they would be placed in an ELD, which is English language development class. We have three different levels, levels one, two, and three, depending on uh, the child's uh, skills. And then we also offer two um, elective courses 
that also helps strengthen a student's English development. For science, um, we have again the college prep or honors classes. Uh, these classes use the next generation science standards in addition to the Amplify curriculum. Um, just listed a, you know, some of the topics that are covered there. We can move on to the next one for world history. Um, the world history, these are the topics that they study, um, they starting with the ancient world and ending with the enlightenment and revolution. And then physical education. So uh, when I spoke, I met with all of your students, I did um, either I visited their schools or they came to Hopkins and visited us. Um, this is the one that got the most reaction because Many of them are very excited that they'll have PE every single day. Um, some of them got a little nervous about the fact that they're going into a locker room and going to have to change for PE. And so that always makes a lot of our students um, very nervous. But I tried to assure them that they'll be fine after a couple of days. They'll see it's not a big deal um, and they'll have a lot of fun. And again, so, so many of them were so excited knowing that they get to do this every day. Okay, so speaking of electives, um, I'm going to be showing you the registration form again in a moment, but these are the electives that um, are offered at Hopkins. As you can see, we have one semester classes and we have full year classes. So if a student is taking a full year class like French one, they would be in that class all year long. But if a student is taking art, that would be for one semester and then they would need another class to fit, finish the year. So maybe it would be art and drama, or it could be handicrafts and communications and speech. So they would be doing two. So going to the next slide, this is what it looks like on the registration form. So I instructed your students, um, they need to look at these elective choices and select six. Um, I don't want less than six and I don't want more than six. I just want them to choose six electives that interest them the most and I want them to rank them. So number one would indicate that it's their first choice, number two is their second choice and so forth. Um, we do not guarantee students their first or second choices. You know, we, we do our very best to accommodate but we can't promise it. Um, so that's why we want six choices from the students so that they're selecting electives and I'm not selecting for them. If you notice, uh, some of these electives have asterisks after them. Those are the ones that indicate a semester course. Um, and again, if you want more information about these electives, you can go to the course catalog or our Hopkins website so you can read more about these electives. All right, so uh, Mrs. Moore, let's pause here for a second. Uh, we have multiple people asking whether students can go from honors to regular to C CPE English or science if in the middle of the year it's, it's too challenging. Yeah, so we do our best. That's a great question. We always try to accommodate the student. Um, so if a student is in honors or accelerated and they're struggling, we will do our very best to move them into the appropriate level. It has to, a lot to do with, with their, their schedule already. If we can accommodate the request, we will. Um, what we don't do is we don't move up in the middle of the year. You know, a student who's doing really well in math in CC2, we're not moving them up to accelerated and same thing with, with honors. So they can, um, the honors, they would have another opportunity in, in eighth grade to go into the honors classes. For the accelerated, it's important for you to know um, just while you're making these decisions that if they don't do accelerated in junior high, the next opportunity will be in high school in 10th grade. Um, so, but that's okay. Like, I don't want that to freak people out um, again everybody will be uh, college on the college track um, and college ready by the end of the senior year, even if they just follow the regular pathway. So there are multiple questions also about what, what would be the benefits of being in honors or accelerated? For me, I mean, I'm, 
I am an advocate for, for not doing it, at least, especially in the first, first year or so, um, you know, I, I don't see the pressure to be in honors or accelerated. I know, I know some people are, are very strong at math, and so it makes sense for them. Um, they're quick and they're quick learners, but I think for the majority of our students, it makes more sense not to go so fast. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm the best person to answer this. For the honors classes, it is going to be, uh, you know, some of the, the rigor is higher. Some of the expectations are higher. Uh, so a student who wants to challenge themselves, um, you know, they'll, they'll definitely get the challenge. Uh, but for me, you know, I, I, you know, a lot of our students were surprised to hear when I shared with them that there's nothing in, in junior high that goes on a college transcript. You know, junior high is a great time or middle school. It's a good time just to start learning how to adapt to the six different teachers and the different bell schedule. No more recess time. Um, and there shouldn't be a pressure to do all the honors and accelerated. I don't know if Ms. Quay, if you want to piggyback yeah. on what I said. Yeah, I think for me, and this ultimately is the family's decision. And I don't know if um, the underlying question behind what the benefits are is if this will help with college and like what Mrs. Moore is saying that colleges do not look at middle school transcripts. I think for me what's most important and I have two boys as well. One is at Kennedy, a ninth grader and one right now is at Maddox, a fourth grader. For me, especially having been in education for 19 years now, public education and working mostly at the high school level um, for my own career journey, just seeing all of those kids throughout the years, it's just so much more important to focus on what the kids' interests are um, because it, it doesn't make sense to push a student who really doesn't like reading and writing to honors, right? And, and we know as parents, like if, if we're pushing, the more that we push, the more that's only going to make the child hate um, whatever that we're pushing too much on if they really don't have an interest in it. So if you see that your child is really, really interested in math and they, they learn math pretty quickly, sometimes maybe in a grade level math class, they might be bored and that being in accelerated might be suitable for them because they're just a quicker learner and they already know a lot about math and they would be interested in moving on a faster pace. That would be a good fit. I think ultimately it's about fit, right? Is, is this going to be the right challenge for your child and they will enjoy it or are they going to um, tune out because it's, it's, it's really too much for them? And, and you as their first teachers, you would be the best person to help your child decide to this is really ultimately uh, a decision between the family and, and the students. Yeah, and I can share that I have uh, two boys as well. I have a freshman and a senior, and we just received really great news regarding my senior. He got accepted into his dream college. Um, he didn't take a single honors class. He didn't take a single AP class. Um, and his acceptance, you know, has a lot to do with, with the passion that, that Ms. Quay was talking about. All right, we have lots of ways for your students to get involved on campus. She talked about web already, uh, which is uh, where your seventh grader will be linked up with an eighth grader. Uh, but we also have clubs. Um, the clubs take place during lunchtime. Um, they are open to any student. So any student can join a club. Um, they can go to multiple clubs throughout the week. Um, and these are just examples of clubs that are happening this, this year. The, the clubs can vary year to year depending on student interest. So this, this made students pretty excited. Again, we have our dual immersion parent information night. That is tomorrow. We invite our immersion parents back. Um, we'll go into more specifics about your child's program, whether they're in the Spanish or Mandarin classes. Um, so that will start again tomorrow at 6.30. Um, students who are in the immersion, and most of them have been in the immersion program since kindergarten. So for people who are not familiar with this, this is a, a program that, that most of our students have been in since kindergarten, um, but they are on track for taking the AP language class in high school, as well as being having that biliteracy um, seal on their high school diploma. 
These are names of people from the different departments and subjects. If you um, had questions and you wanted to reach out, we've listed our department chairs. We have our counselors listed. I didn't list all the teachers for the electives, but um, you know, I listed the ones who tend to get the majority of the questions. Um, and if you have questions, you can always reach out to us as well and we will direct you. And then we have our open house that you will be invited to attend. It's like an expo. We call it an um, open house or expo uh, where you'll be able to come visit our campus and see student work. Um, and hopefully, yeah, the invites will go out and that'll be live. It won't be, it's not going to be virtual. Right, and we have some time also to answer. There's uh, quite a few questions in the Q&A that we haven't been able to answer. So let's see. Um, this is more, do you want to, uh, let's do, I can start answering, we can maybe take turns. I can start answering questions from the very top and you can start from the very bottom. That way, hopefully by the end, we can address okay. everyone's, okay. So the first question right here I'm seeing is, uh, where can folks find vaccination form that needs to be filled out? I believe that will be coming from, later on. Mrs. Moore, do you know when um, Ms. Marsha will be sending out that or the district office? I, I don't think it comes from the DIS school. I think you get a verification from your doctor, of, like a vaccination form that you have to submit to. Since you're submitting things to your school site, um, I think you have to attach a copy or get verification from your doctor of the, of the vaccinations. Um, so I would reach out to your school secretary uh, to get clarification of what she's collecting or he's collecting. Um, so it's it's not, I don't think it comes from the school site itself. Right. For me, I had a question um, regarding wanting to attend Hopkins. Um, so in order to attend Hopkins, you need to live in the attendance area. Um, there is information and I don't have it handy, but you could go to the district's website. Um, so any, any student living in the Hopkins attendance area will um, be automatically allowed to come as well as the students in the immersion program. All right, my next question, are all the six classes in the same room for seventh graders? Each of the six classes um, has a different teacher. So the students will be traveling um, from class to class each period. And they'll have six different teachers. Um, parents asking about after school sports and thank you for pointing that out. Um, so I did talk about it with the students. So we there are two after school sports programs. We have basketball and volleyball for both boys and girls. There's one team per quarter. So quarter one is girls volleyball. Quarter two is boys basketball. Quarter three, which is where we are right now, that is girls basketball. And fourth quarter is boys volleyball. So we always put announcements in the bulletin. Um, students are invited to, to try out. If they make the team, they go to the practices and then there are eight games per season. There's a question about whether uh, if the student is already gate identified, should they send additional documentation? Um, mm -hmm. our, yeah. our registration form on the sticker, that already has the student's identifier on it and gate is one of them. So you would not need to turn yeah. it. And even if it's missing, it's in my, it's in infinite campus. So I, I can see whether a student is, is gate identified or not. So even if the sticker, sometimes the stickers have information that doesn't make sense, or it says your student is a, in an ELD class, but they're not, or special ed. I, I don't quite understand how the stickers exactly work for everything, but I can see it from my end in infinite campus. So no, you don't need to submit anything. And I know later on, I briefly saw that some, some people are asking, what is GATE? So GATE stands for Gifted and Talented Education. 
And this was this is a program that students will be able to qualify for um, starting back when they were in third grade. There was an assessment that will qualify students to be identified as gate. Um, I know that starting here, the district is moving away from assessment and right now I believe it's in, at the elementary school level still and it's uh, identified by by a team of staff members um there's a question about electives so um if my student after completing one semester elective do they choose their second semester later on no you need to choose all six choice put put your six choices on that green form um, because they don't choose later. So we create the schedules before the first day of school. Um, so make sure on that green registration form, you're selecting six electives and ranking them. And while we're on that note, somebody asked, well, what if we're in an elective and we don't like the elective or we wanna change, are we allowed to change? We do give you an opportunity to request a schedule change request. You're not guaranteed. A schedule change again it depends on space and and if your child's schedule can be moved around uh, but yes we do we do allow changes if they work in the schedule all right and then speaking of changes one person asked can they move out of accelerated math at any point during seventh and or eighth grade um, and as mrs moore mentioned earlier We'll try our best, of course, to accommodate students, but at either the semester or at the end of the year. We're not able to easily move students from class to class. And also at the same time, we don't want to overcrowd the CP math classes too. So this is why it's really important to have a conversation with your child, take a look at the placement test and pick the level that you feel would, would best fit. Um, because right now, as we're gathering information about the class, the course requests from you and your child, this is where we determine what classes the teachers will be teaching next year. Um, and also how, if we have enough teachers, how many more we need to hire. So all that information right now that we're gathering from you helps us determine a lot of, lot of really important decisions. And sometimes based on space or based on what we decide because of your choices later on. Of course, we'll do our best to accommodate, but if the space is not available, then we're not able to. So, um, well, I think the answer, just an oversimplified answer would be, well, we'll try our best to accommodate and make sure that the students, if later at the semester point or the year point, um, accelerated is not a good fit, we'll try our best to accommodate. We do have math intervention help available as well. And we're working on continuing that. That's an after school intervention program available for our students who need the, the help. A parent is asking if it's okay for their child not to take a world language in seventh or eighth grade. The answer is yes, it's absolutely okay for your student not to do that. Most students don't start their world language until ninth grade or 10th grade. Um, so there there's not a pressure um to start it earlier um it's a choice so the next question is about i think the math acceleration what do they do if they finish math one year faster so essentially if a student is on the accelerated math pathway in their seventh grade year they are learning both seventh and eighth grade math in their eighth grade year, they will be learning both eighth grade and ninth grade math so that by the time they're a ninth grader, they're essentially, if they, of course, if their grades are still good and qualifying them for the next accelerated level, they'll be able to take 10th grade math. Um, and in our slide deck, which I'll put in chat again, there's also a link to the district math pathways. That way you can see how and what exactly, what kind of math classes align with the child's math pathway. Yeah. For, for the um, iReady scores, you don't have to provide the scores for me. Um, the, the district will give me the scores. So I'll, I'll know what your student score was for the fall iReady or the winter. So um, you don't have to worry about providing that. 
All right, the next question is, is there a quota for honors or accelerated? Um, it, and this is again where it's really important for us to get the information from you and the correct information because we are basing what we're offering based on what you're selecting. So if there are students who qualify for honors and accelerated and they want those classes, we're going to provide the sections to, to make sure that they are in those classes. Same thing with CP. Um, regarding world language, the only world languages we offer for an elective is Spanish or French. How many honors classes should my child take if they are qualified? And again, that will be a conversation that the family should be having with the student. Um, we want to also always make sure that the student is not overly stressed. Um, so make, making sure that they're both interested in it, that they of course qualify and that, that it's not going to be overly stressful. So it, it's really a family decision um, that we're encouraging you to have with the students. If a student doesn't take um, any honors in in middle school, uh, the and they want and then going on to high school and they're they're interested again, they're going to look at grades. Um, keep in mind that there is no honor science in ninth grade, so it's confusing to me why we have honors in middle school, but then they go to ninth grade and there is no honor science. The honor science doesn't begin until tenth grade. Um, so the only honors class that they would be able to go into right now is English. So if your student is not doing honors, um, they're just doing regular college prep, um, the, I believe they have to have a, um, I'd have to go back and look at the course catalog. It's either a minimum of a, I think it's a B minus or higher to qualify for honors, but I'd have to check the, the course catalog to, to be certain on that. The next question, does the sixth grade teacher need to recommend a student into accelerated math? Could you say that question again? Does the sixth grade teacher need to recommend a student into accelerated math? No, there's no uh, teacher recommendation. Uh, we are going by the district criteria and the district criteria is only the iReady scores. That is all we are looking at. Um, let's see, sorry, I was reading the questions to myself. Uh, somebody said that they submitted the forms already to the elementary school. Will those be routed to us? Yes, they will. Thank you, because um, you know, the, the teacher is going to be filling in their portion before it comes to us. So yes, we will get those from, from the, the elementary schools. All right, the next question is, what is the qualifications required to take honors? in seventh grade second semester. So please note that um, we only move a student from CP to honors at the year at, at the end of the year, um, that we're not making that change at the semester mark. Um, this parent is asking if, if will all students who are in the school boundaries of Hopkins, will they have a seat at Hopkins? Yes, if you live in the attendance area, you are guaranteed a seat at Hopkins as well as the immersion students. Um, if an immersion student does not live in the attendance area, they are still guaranteed a seat. Um, the next question is whether PE has basketball team games. Um, they do play ba basketball, that's one of the units and they play on teams. And as Mrs. Moore said earlier, we have uh, our official school team as well that practices and plays against other middle schools after school. We have our boys basketball team and our girls basketball team. Uh, the boys basketball is in the fall or no, in the winter. And then the, the girls were around November, October and the girls basketball is, is right now around January, February. So a parent is asking about um, the proof of residency. Do those get submitted to your current uh, elementary? or to Hopkins, you're gonna submit everything to the elementary. So the registration form, your proof of residency, the vaccination forms, those all get turned in to your, um, your child's school, current school. 
um, and then those will get forwarded to us. Um, one question is about whether the students are going to be given their first choice elective. Again, we'll try our best to accommodate, but that is not a guarantee because of the, just the classes that we have. Yeah, um, so for clubs, uh, if a student is interested in a club, all they have to do is just show up. Um, so we will uh, advertise clubs in our daily bulletin next year, and it'll tell them what day, what classroom to report to at lunchtime. And that's the way that they, they can attend. Um, they don't have to um, apply. The, the clubs are open to anybody. Uh, someone's asking if there's fitness equipment in our multi-purpose room. Our PE department does have um, different setups to, to do different exercise and, and sports, but not, uh, not treadmills or, or bikes, uh, if that was what the question was referring to. And the multi-purpose room is also used by other programs too. It's not just a PE or a fitness space. Uh, it's used by our music program, our drama program, and also will be used um, for lunch services too. Um, a question about vaccination forms. When is the last date to submit them? So your student will not be allowed to attend school if their vaccination form is not submitted, if they're not up to date on their vaccinations. Um, they won't have a schedule released to them. So um, I would say the sooner the better. Uh, you still have time. You know, you don't have to, um, it, we're only in, in February or well, almost March now, um, but just know that your child will not be able to attend school if they don't have their vaccinations um, up to date. Uh, let's see. Would elective be a seventh class? Looking at the bell schedule, there are only six periods. So for our students in the immersion program, they have a choice of choosing a zero period that would then give them seven classes. But that option is available only to our immersion students in the Spanish or the Mandarin program. Um, we do not have Mandarin as a language, as a world language. We have the Mandarin immersion program, um, but not Mandarin as a world language. And the next question, if the student takes an elective language, French or Spanish, is it continue to eighth grade? And yes, it will. Um, so they would take French or Spanish one as a seventh grader. And then the following year, they'll take French two or Spanish two as an eighth grader. Does the band orchestra happen during the regular school hour? Yes, it does. So all electives take place during the regular school day. We don't know what the schedule will be yet. Somebody was asking like what time of day will band or orchestra take place? We don't know yet. We haven't created the schedule, but it will be sometime between first and sixth period. All right. So I know that there's always going to be questions. Um, unfortunately, we are at time right now, um, 7.30. And if somehow we are not able to answer your question, please feel free to reach out to Mrs. Moore, to me, to the seventh grade counselor, Mrs. Kim. She's welcoming questions her way as well. We want to make sure that you are feeling at ease and that you're excited and your child is excited to come to Hopkins in a few months. It's going to happen so fast and we're looking forward to, to welcoming them and to seeing them in different events, maybe at our open house, our expo, um, or maybe at web. But we're looking forward to seeing you soon. Mrs. Moore, would you like to add anything? Um, no, I was just trying to answer some last minute questions in the chat. Um, but yes, thank you for coming. And if questions come up, feel free to reach out. And then, you know, your school, your child's school may have the answer as well. So if it's regarding proofs of residency or, or vaccination. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you.